Fire maker goes in. So they're being loaded for the 135th Belmont Stakes. Funny side can win the Visa Triple Crown. Let's go to Tom Durkin for the call. And there is Funny Side on the doorstep of Destiny. Scrimshaw going into the starting gate with Gary Stevens. We're waiting for Funny Side, Dynever, and 10 Most Wanted. Funny Side, a picture of composure, and he moves into the starting gate like an old pro, three years old in all. Dynever moves into post position number five, and completing the field of six is 10 Most Wanted with Jockey Pat Day. They're in the gate and ready for the start. in the 135th Belmont Stakes. Empire Maker broke alertly. Scrimshaw right there, and Funny Side off to a very sharp beginning, and those three scrimmaging for the lead as they move into the clubhouse turn. Dine Ever and Ten Most Wanted just in behind, running fourth and fifth. Five lengths back to Long Shot Supervisor. Funny Side and Scrimshaw. Funny Side on the outside. Scrimshaw toward the inside, and a change in tactics here for Funny Side today. A change of tactics from the Derby and the Preakness. He is going to be the early leader. Funny side in front as they round the sweeping clubhouse turn here at Belmont Park. Scrimshaw will sit back in second. And Empire Maker and Jerry Bailey, they broke from the rail, but now they're on the outside. And they are tracking Funny Side intently as they make their turn into the backstretch now. Then only three lengths behind the front runners. On the outside is 10 most wanted, followed by Dine Ever to his inside. Six lengths back to trailing supervisor. The quarter at 23 and 4. The half in 48 and 3 fifth seconds. Honest enough. The leader is Funny Side, tracked by his arch rival, Empire Maker, on the outside, glued to him as they continue their run down the backstretch. Scrimshaw's not far behind. He's third toward the inside. Dine Ever now gets a little nudge from Edgar Prado. Ten most wanted on the outside, sitting chilly. They're halfway through the Belmont. They've run three quarters in one thirteen and two. And it's Funny Side and Empire Maker one two. Scrimshaw, Gary Stevens asking a bit more from him. He's down toward the inside. Dine Ever, ten most wanted, well within striking range as the field moves into the far turn. It's Funny Side still holding that lead. The imposing presence of Empire Maker right alongside. They've been one, two throughout. They enter the final half mile together. And now Bailey makes his move with Empire Maker. He is at the throat latch of Funny Side. Funny Side and Empire Maker. There's nothing between them. And at the midway point on the far turn, Empire Maker pokes his head in front. Emboldened by that challenge, Funny Side fights right back. And 10 most wanted right there in behind them with Pat Day as the field turns for home in the Belmont. And it is Empire Maker on the outside. Santos has gone to the whip on Funny Side. Empire Maker a short lead. Funny Side is doing his best, but he's dropping back. And here comes Pat Day. And he's coming with 10 most wanted. Funny Side has dropped back to third. Down to the final 100 yards of the Belmont. Empire Maker Jerry Bailey asking him for everything he has. 10 most wanted right there with him. Here's the wire. And Empire Maker has won the 135th Belmont Stakes. He won it by a neck over 10 most wanted. By the back, funny side, checked in, third, beaten five lengths. Well, Bobby Frankel has finally won his Triple Crown event. He has won it with Empire Maker. And for funny side today, a disappointing third place effort in the test of the champion. The Triple Crown denied again as Bobby Frankel in a near sprint to the winner's circle. He had finished second in his only two prior starts in the Belmont Stakes. And Jose Jr., Rita Santos' mother, the Sacatoga Stable principals. Funny side went right to the front. And that's not a back tactic because Triple Crown winners have been the leaders in the Belmont Stakes. But Empire Maker came alongside just as he had done in the Derby, but this time he didn't hang. This time he went by and then had to hold off the challenge of 10 most wanted as the Triple Crown is denied one more time. There is Funny Side and Jose Santos gamely hanging on but finishing third. Let's go to Donna. Jerry Bailey, you've looked in this horse all along, even after he got beat in the Derby. What turned the tables today? I think he had a good regimen all, all the way up to the race. Stayed healthy, he didn't miss any training. And he showed what he could do. Now, you told me before the uh, race that he was very, very tractable, tractable, very manageable. Did he just fall right into your hand, the pace set up like you thought it would? Yeah, he could have been on the lead, actually. He's heads up going to the turn. I just eased him back. He allowed me to. Then I put him back outside, tracked funny size. He allowed me to. The only thing he did wrong is he kind of pulled up when he made the lead. 
When you got up to the throat latch at funny side, did you think you had funny side? I knew I had him from the top of the backside because he was so ranked with Jose, he couldn't get him to settle down today. I knew he'd wear himself out. Well, Jerry, I know that uh, you're afraid that you might go back there to some booze, but I think there's going to be some awfully happy people for you. Well, I'm one of them. If there's only a few of us, I'm one of them. I'm happy for you, too, Jerry. We're always disappointed to see a triple crown go down, but I'm happy for you. Thank you. It was good for racing. All right, Tom, as you can see, being the spoiler doesn't change the enthusiasm of the winning jockey. And uh, funny side getting an ovation from the fans as he returns and Empire America jogs back. And now the second guessing, of course, will start. Was that work earlier this week? Funny side, 57 and 4, too fast. He went out fast and didn't finish up. And that's kind of what happened in the race today. Maybe you thought that was the way he was supposed to run. Funny side, the 17th to win the Derby in Preakness and fail at the mile and a half Belmont. And Jerry Bailey says by this time, he knew he had it won, at least as regards funny side, but it was 10 most wanted that mounted the challenge in the stretch. Absolutely, and, and all along everyone felt the 10 most wanted would be a horse with a good long stamina laden pedigree. But here is Empire Maker finally living up to what everyone had expected of him before. This will be bittersweet for Bobby Frankel because he will wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh, what if? He'll be agonizing over that Kentucky Derby, but it's proof positive of how hard it is to win the Triple Crown. You not only have to have the best horse, you've got to be the luckiest. And a New Yorker, Bobby Frankel, spoils the Triple Crown bread of a New York horse. Bobby Frankel, born in Brooklyn, That's his friend and fellow trainer, Lisa Lewis, who ran Kiss and Sane in the Freakness. And Barkley Tag watched the end of the race as Funny Side led to the turn for home. And by now, I think he knows that the Triple Crown bid was not to be. In just a few strides around the middle of the turn, the dream was shattered. He knew. He knew that the horse was really fighting Jose too much the early part, even though the fractions were soft, and everybody was crushed here. And the Sacatoga stable. And Good for applaud. them. Yeah. Applaud this horse. He, ne he didn't hang it up when the horses passed him. He kept on trying and finished third. They're going to have a lot of fun, happy years with this fellow. As we applaud them. Let's go to Bob Newmeyer. Jose Santos is with me. Barkley Tag is with Mike Battaglia. Jose, first of all, you had a smile on your face as you weighed out today. Why? Well, definitely. I have no reason to be disappointed about this horse. He definitely won the two more important races. We was the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. I mean, we, we want to win the Visa Triple Crown, definitely, you know, for New York. But uh, circumstances, you know, it's a racehorse uh, running over there. And, uh, I mean, uh, he was tore best today. Tell us about your trip down the backside. You took the lead, and you heard Bailey right on your shadow, right in your footsteps, stalking you every step of the way. Tell us about it. Well, I know exactly what's, what's going to happen, you know. And uh, I have... Uh, Soon when I pass the first turn and I, I feel uh, Jerry Bailey right next to me, you know, he rode a good race and uh, my horse, I don't think, I know he liked the mud, but I don't think he was uh, handling to, today so well. He was uh, switching late back and forth a couple of times and uh, where and I don't want it, but uh, he ran a good race. He finished third, we try and uh, listen. I hope we don't have to wait another 25 years. Uh, congratulations on a great ride, Jose. Thank you. Great ride to the Derby and the Preakness, and Mike has Mr. Tag. And Barkley, again, congratulations, as Bob just said, on a great ride. This horse ran two great races. He was in front today. Jose said he might have been a little bit rank. Uh, what did you think? When, when he made the lead in 48 and change, were you confident? I was pretty confident when he made the six furlongs in 13 and change. Right. So uh, it's just disappointing. I feel bad for all the people that were so far behind, you know, behind him. Uh, wanting him to win this you know right yeah. everybody i think was wanting know, to win the fans here right. what about the quick work the 57 and 4 in hindsight i don't think that had anything to do with it nothing at all i really truly don't think it had anything to do with it no he, he just got beat by a better horse today the horses always run better when they've had a fast work i didn't do it on purpose but i don't i didn't think it had anything to do with it no he was fine he went into it fine and Barkley, again, you had a great run. You never know what they're going to do in mud. You, you, you really don't. They, he handled the kind of a muddy track at Aqueduct. Well, it wasn't anything like this. And uh, the Pimlico thing was, that track was perfect that day, you know. So, I mean, I, 
uh, this was the first time he's really had to be in the mud. I don't know whether that was it or what, what it was. But uh, I was pretty confident when he came into it, but he didn't do it. So. And not, nothing wrong with the way Jose rode him. To go to the front in this slop is probably the right thing to do. Uh, I didn't mind at all. I mean, he went to half in 48 and changed. He went to yeah. six furlongs in 13 and changed. You can't ask for any more than that, you know? Again, congratulations on a great run and a good shot here in the Belmont. Tom? All right, Mike, there's the dismount by Jerry Bailey aboard the uh, winner Empire Maker. Empire Maker, three-year-old colt by Unbridled out of the wonderful mare Toussaint by El Grand Senor. She's so special that back at Judmont Farms in Kentucky, she has her own double-wide stall, air-conditioned, heated. She is a, an unbelievable producer. And this is a royally bred colt. And he's led away now by his groom and Bobby's foreman, uh, Ruben Loza. Great job with this colt. They did a good job getting him patched back up in the five weeks and getting him right again. Empire Maker, six dollars, three seventy, two eighty. Ten most wanted, five eighty, three twenty. Funny side, two seventy. Forty-four dollar exacta and a sixty-seven fifty trifecta. Let's go to Kenny Rice. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. With me is Pat Day. Ten most wanted runs second in this race. Like Empire Maker, he also had not raced since the Kentucky Derby. What was the difference today than when he finished up the track in the Derby, Pat? Well, I don't know. Empire Maker was maybe a better horse today, but, uh, you know, my horse didn't get a lot out of the Derby. He got bumped real hard at the break, and I think that's what knocked he, when he knocked his back out of alignment. And he never picked up the bit, never really got a lot out of the race. But I tell you, Wally's done an outstanding job with this horse. Obviously, he took him out to California, hasn't missed a day of training. Came into the race looking like a million dollars and really put up a game effort. I, I couldn't be more happy. I take that back. I could be only, only be happier if we were getting our picture taken right now. When you turned for home, you told me earlier that you were looking at Empire Maker. You were going to follow the path of Bailey instead of Funny Side as you were coming for the stretch. Yeah, well, Jerry had run up on the outside of Funny Side, was clocking him all the way, and I was right in behind Jerry. Uh, I thought I'd just wait till Jerry, you know, call on his horse off the turn, and then I would drift out and, and put him to the task. That's the way it worked out. My horse punched hard, got right up to his throat lats, but just couldn't get by him late. Did you have a feeling that maybe there might be a chance when you got in that uh, final 16? Well, at that point, uh, when I hadn't run by him, I was afraid he was going to run out of time. I'd made a big surge up to his throat latch, and then uh, just inside the eighth pole, come to the 16th pole, we were just holding our ground and, and not making up much, and I didn't feel like at that point we was going to be able to go ahead and get on by him. Well, great comeback for him today after the disappointment well, in the derby. It really was. It was a great race, and uh, honey, I love you. Hope you're feeling better. But uh, we'll Imagine that's your wife? Yeah, she's uh, little, down with a little respiratory infection, but I know she's feeling better now. All right. Thanks very much, Pat Day. Tom Commendable was the last Kentucky, was the only up until now winner of the Belmont Stakes who had only run in the Kentucky Derby and then not raced for five weeks. And today we have two horses that have come out of the Kentucky Derby, hadn't raced for five weeks, and they run one two here in this Belmont. Back to you. Exactly right, Kenny. The tenth time in history that the Derby's beaten favorite avenges his loss in the Belmont, but the first to do so without having at least one more start in between those races. Here's the complete order of finish in the 135th Belmont Stakes. Empire Maker, 10 most wanted, Funny Side, Donover, Supervisor, and Scrimshaw. So Empire Maker, trained by a New York-born Jewish man for a Saudi Arabian prince, Khaled Abdullah, wins the Belmont Stakes and gives Bobby Frankel his first victory in a Triple Crown race. Back for the presentation at Belmont Park in just a moment. Park, as the results again, the payoffs, the time uh, 228.26 on the extremely sloppy track as Empire Maker holds off 10 most wanted with Funny Side fading to third. And Charles, you talking about the tactics in the race. I wasn't surprised at all to see Funny Side go to the front from that uh, number four post position, were you? Well, we talked about it earlier. The workout was very sharp and, and very fast in the beginning, and I didn't see any way they were going to be able to steady him back. And even though the fractions weren't that fast, when a rider has to really sit against a horse and fight him that much, it takes something out of him. Now, whether he was going to get the mile and a half or not, I'm not sure, but, you know. Let's All take right. a look at the uh, replay of the race, and you'll see right in the center is Funny Side in stall number four. Broke well and now has to go, what, about three wide before he gets the lead and gets over to the rail. He does. Actually, Empire Maker almost outbroke the gate today. He broke very sharp and got a good position. That's Scrimshaw up on the inside in the green and yellow silks. And Wayne Lucas had said he would be forwardly placed today. 
and the eventual second place horse is tucked in behind Empire Maker, but he does swing a little wide here as they go around the turn. Santos hoping to get clear of Scrimshaw. I'm sure he's hoping and praying that Scrimshaw won't go quite with him. But look at his feet. Look uh, at see how his feet on are on the dashboard, front. as they he, say. He almost looks like a steeplechase jock right. going down to the first hurdle here. He's doing his best. He's not fighting him, but he's really got a lot of hold of him. But Funny Side's got his ears up. He's going easily. And Empire Maker just behind him. Jerry Bailey has not asked him to run at all. And he just starts narrowing the gap, looks like, on his own. You can almost see Bailey looks like he's locked on radar. You know, he's just stalking right off of him. And he's just measuring and inching up a little bit, probably, just to keep Funny Side on the muscle and because he knows that it's questionable whether he's going to get the whole mile and a half. So he's leaning on him a little bit here, keeping him right in his sights. As, as Numi talked about earlier, this is almost a match race, and they have to keep each other pretty close together here not let one get away from the other one so it's going according to actually what the boys said would happen today and there's this is the time that Jerry Bailey said he knew he had funny side uh, measured because he had been ranked and Santos unable to really control him so he's just moving up at a leisurely pace Scrimshaw right in there but uh, on the rail will eventually fade the last after this and into the turn and Empire Maker now starts to make his move just as he had done boldly in the Derby and then flattened out. Actually, now you see Jose Santos starting to bend over and he realizes that Bailey is up outside him with Empire Maker. Now the race is joined. Now see they go and they go head and head for a little bit. But look at Santos's hands. He's already pumping on this horse. Bailey is you could put a glass of water on his back. He isn't moving and Empire Maker is sweeping on by and just like that the Triple Crown is over. And you'll see the whip come out here right there in the left hand of Jose Santos to no avail though. Funny side still giving it his all and now Jerry Bailey says when Empire Maker gets to the lead he sort of starts to relax a little bit and all that talk about a match race just about went by the boards as 10 most wanted charges up. He, he makes a really tremendous late run. This was kind of expected of him at the Derby. He had some problems and Empire Maker always still a little green. He tends to weave a little bit through the stretch but Bailey knew he had 10 most wanted measured and it was just a picture perfect race. And uh, down in the winner's circle awaiting the presentation in a few moments Bobby Frankel and his uh, entourage watching that replay of the race and this is the Empire Maker we expected to see since he won the Florida Derby by a record 10 links or so back in the spring disappointing perhaps in the Derby but winning the Belmont and holding off uh, 10 most wanted the cyber cappers may be voting with their hearts as well as their heads thought funny side could do it instead it's Empire Maker.